Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Dreaming AI. My name is Nuked, and today we are going to learn how to create our very own LoRa. As I mentioned in a previous video, LoRa stands for a low rank adaptation and is a training technique used to teach large models new things faster and with less memory. Imagine having to teach a computer to understand human language like you would with a virtual assistant, such as Siri or Alexa. With LoRa, instead of starting from scratch every time the model needs to learn something new, we retain what it has already learned in the past, adding only this new part. So when it learns something new, it does so more efficiently. This also helps the model not to forget what it has already learned. Furthermore, this technique is very intelligent in managing the model's attention, helping it focus on important details during learning. And finally, LoRa also makes the computer's memory usage more efficient, which means it can learn new things with fewer resources, just like learning a new language without having to study for hours and hours. Honestly, I've been wanting to understand how these models are created for a while, but I haven't had the time to study how it all works. Recently, a node has been released that allows us to do this directly from Comfy UI, saving us from having to install alternative interfaces. In fact, usually we would have had to rely on an interface called Kohaya, on which the code of this node is based. However, if you want, once you become familiar with the basics, you can comfortably proceed to use Koya directly, which surely has more features and parameters for total control over the creation of our model. Well, before we start our workflow, we need to create a dataset. In our example, it will consist of a series of manga-style images. Now, creating the dataset is one of the most important parts and should be done carefully, keeping in mind that the images must clearly convey to the model what it should imitate. As described by the author of this custom node in a post on Reddit, it is important that our dataset, although varied, is of quality and contains material that immediately communicates to the model what it needs to learn. Since this is just an example, I simply searched for some manga-style images on Google and downloaded them. I won't show them to you just to avoid copyright issues. As for the folder structure, you'll need to create a general folder for your style or a character you're creating the Laura for. In my case, I created the manga-style folder but the name is only for organizational purposes as it has no value in training. Inside it, you must obligatorily put one or more folders renamed in this, this format. Uh, number underscore description, the number must be greater than zero, while in this case the description can be anything as it will not be considered. In other cases, such as Dreamboof training, which is not supported in this node, this format is used to identify the number of repetitions of the dataset to be processed and the class name which is practically the category describing the images inside. But I repeat that for LoRa training, these two things will not be taken into consideration. All right, so let's proceed with the installation of the necessary nodes, which are image captioning in Comfy UI and LoRa training in Comfy. Uh, for both, I'll be using my forks for now, which I have also sent as pull requests to the original node author in the hope that the changes I've made will be included Let's proceed to download them with git clone into the custom nodes folder. If you're not sure how to do this, you can refer to a video I made in the past on installing custom nodes. Upon the first launch of Comfy UI, the necessary dependencies will be installed. Pay attention to messages like this. As if they appear, you'll need to restart Comfy UI after it finishes so that the node works correctly. If you're using the original node, you'll need to install the dependencies listed uh, either in the winrequirements.txt file for Windows or the requirements.txt file for Linux before starting Comfy UI to avoid problems. Since I'm currently without my Linux operating system, I couldn't test my fork on it, so it's very likely that you'll also need to use the requirements.txt file to complete the operation for the latter. Great, now let's divide our workflow into three parts. Uh, the first part is where we associate a description with each image. The second part is where we perform the actual training. And the third and final part is where we test our new LoRa. So, Let's start with the construction of the first part. Load the Wara Caption Load node. 
where we'll set the folder where our images are located. In my case, it's this one. Just a quick note, among the changes I made, I also introduced support for JPEG files, which are still missing in the original. Now, in the original example, WD14 tagger is used to tag each image. Um, since I recently introduced a model called JoyTag in my GPT node, which is known to provide better tagging than the models used by WD14, I decided to use that instead. However, you can use whichever you prefer. So let's open the uh, GPT sampler loader node and connect both it and the LoRa caption load to the GPT text sampler node. Finally, open the LoRa caption save node and connect the fields in this way. In this last node, there's also the prefix field, which is simply our keyword that we'll then use in our prompt to activate our LoRa. In this case, I'll use my manga. It's not mandatory, but it's recommended to facilitate the use of the model. Perfect. Now let's start the workflow. As you can see, text files containing the associated tags for each image have been generated in the image folder. If you want fewer, you can modify the max tags parameter of the GPT text sampler. Now for the boring part, Open each text file and check for any inconsistencies or strange things between the tags in the image. For example, here I have these tags that are useless as the correct one is only two boys. As tedious as this part may be, it's extremely important because wrong tags compromise the model's training. And also, as you can see, our prefix is listed as the first tag. Once done, we can proceed to the second part, which consists of actually launching the training. Um, to do this, I'll use the LoRa training node in Comfy Advanced. You can also use the basic one, but I prefer using this one to explain some settings in detail. Scrolling from top to bottom, we have CKPT underscore name, which is the name of the model from which we'll start to create our LoRa model. V2 is the option to enable if the previous model is a model belonging to version 2.0 of Stable Diffusion, uh, which means all those models that have a base image size of 768 by 768 instead of 512 by 512. And the SDXL models, however, are still not supported as of now, but I'm confident they will be soon. Network module determines the type of LoRa network used impacting the model's architecture and computational characteristic. A lead-a link in the description if you're interested. Mixed precision enables training with mixed precision to optimize memory usage, especially beneficial for GPUs with limited memory. I will use B of 16 since it's supported in the NVIDIA RTX 30 series. Save precision specifies the precision with which the model will be saved, ensuring compatibility with different hardware configuration. Network dimension. Uh, defines the rank of LoRa, influencing the model's expressive capacity and memory requirements. Rank is the number of simultaneous interactions the model can consider during data processing. I know, however, that increasing it will increase also memory usage and training time. ConvDim specifies the size of a network matrix called Conv2D used for training, affecting feature extraction and computational efficiency. Network Alpha sets the alpha value to prevent underflow and ensure stable training, crucial for numerical stability during optimization. Training resolution determines the resolution of training images impacting the level of detail captured by the model. For SD1.x, the default value is 512. For SD2.x, it's 768. Data path specifies the location of the dataset folder, essential for accessing training data. Be sure to enter the path to the folder containing the dataset folder here, not the direct path to the dataset. Um, in our case, I'll enter the path to the manga style folder. Batch size determines the number of data processed simultaneously during training, affecting the RAM usage and training speed. Uh, with 10 gigs, I wasn't able to go beyond two. Max train epochs 
sets the number of epochs for training, balancing training duration, and model performance. For this example, we'll train our network for 400 steps, while LoRa models that you usually find on Civit AI, for example, are trained for about 10, 20,000 steps and on many more images. Save every n epochs specifies how often the training progress is saved. Key tokens controls the shuffling of tags during training, preserving certain tags from shuffling. Min SNR gamma specifies the min SNR weighting strategy, influencing the importance of different data samples during training. I'll also leave some information about this in the description. The next two parameters instead set the learning rate values of the text encoder and the unit. So the learning rate identifies how fast we want the trained model to learn. If it's too small, we risk the model taking too long or never learning. If it's too large, it's possible for the model to learn to approximately. Uh, learning rate scheduler. Chooses the learning rate scheduler, which dynamically adjusts the learning rate during training to optimize convergence. LR restart cycles determines the number of restarts in the cosine with restart scheduler, influencing learning rate adaptation. Optimizer type specifies the optimizer used for training. Output name determines the name of the file for the LoRa model. Algorithm is the algorithm used in the network module we select earlier. Network dropout controls dropout regularization to prevent Overfitting, improving the model's generalization ability. Clipskip specifies the recommended layer level for the model selected in CKPT name. Output DIR defines the directory where the LORA model will be saved. By default, it's Comfy UI's directory. In the end, we have TensorBoard that enables an interface commonly used during model training to visualize the training progress. In the original node, it was executable with a separate node, but I preferred to integrate it here for practical reasons. The interface can be viewed at this address once the training has started. Well, after probably the longest explanation I've ever given for a custom node, let's proceed to execute the training. Great, now that's done. Let's try using our LoRa like this. In this example, since our training has been done on very few images and for very few epochs, I'll exaggerate the value of strength model beyond normal. In properly trained models, in fact, this value should be around 0.7. In the positive clip, I'll put the prefix we set earlier. For this example, I'll also include a flow that shows us what the image would look like without LoRa, so we can see if we've actually had a significant impact on the result. Well, I'd say that for a model trained with only 400 steps and on very few images, it has had a significant impact indeed. Great. And with that, we're done for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and that it's not too full of inaccuracies since I'm also learning along with you. Um, also, I've never been very good with these things, but I really wanted to sincerely thank all the people who have decided to support me, both on YouTube and on Patreon, and all those who have decided to subscribe and leave likes. Believe me when I say that I never thought I would get all this attention just by doing what I love. So, once again, thank you. So please consider liking and subscribing if you found this tutorial useful. Also, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to help you out as much as I can. And until next time, keep dreaming.